Something had gone wrong. That much the boyfriend perceived from his spot in the waiting area of the upscale salon. His girlfriend, Stephanie, came to him, her dark hair unusually limp and straight, but her makeup perfect, and threw herself into the seat beside him. Designer jeans, expensive heels and handbags, perfect makeup and hair, all of this had crept into his world, and now he wished for simpler days. When she was still in her twenties, she hadn't realized that reaching thirty might negatively affect her looks. She had changed in three years. The outer compensation of her internal turmoil was costly to both his wallet and their relationship. Well, everything is ruined, she said. They gave away my hair appointment because you got us here ten minutes late, and now they can't get me in for another hour. So, you can leave? No. She gave him that look. The one that said he knew nothing about the world of bridesmaids. I have to wait here until something opens. He flipped through yet another magazine of phony models in various poses and hairstyles. What? She typed furiously on her phone. Oh, I can't believe that little... Mm. He raised an eyebrow at her. Problems? Jessica was supposed to get the card and gift bag. Anna was supposed to get the ribbons and something blue. But they had to go downtown for their hair, and now they're stuck behind an accident. Idiots. I told them not to go downtown. Now I have to get everything, and with my appointment being delayed, I have no idea when I'll do that. She resumed her frantic typing. I'll go while you get your hair done. Even Walmart on a Saturday afternoon was better than sitting in the cloud of fumes and pretension. She narrowed her eyes. Will you get exactly what I tell you to get? Of course. I'm texting you the list. Don't bother. My phone won't last that long. He had plugged it in last night so it would get him through the day. But Stephanie needed the outlet to charge her camera. Charge it in the car, she answered when he had accused her. Great plan. Except his car charger had broken last week, and he hadn't yet replaced it. She took a pen and paper from her handbag. After several minutes of detailed scribbling, she handed him the list. Wedding card. Something with sparkles in pink. Not silly or funny. Gift bag to match the card. Small to fit the panties. Tissue paper. Make sure it goes with the bag. Stockings. No nonsense. Size B. Beige mist. No substitutions. Mascara. L'Oreal Paris. Voluminous. Waterproof. Black as black. Tampons. Tampax. Pearl only. Super only. This is important. Might all. Liquid gels. No caplets. Memory card. SD. At least 32 gigabytes. Blue panties. Size 6. Something classy and lacy. Not trashy. No Joking. Ribbon. Bright pink. Magenta. Quarter inch thick. Smooth and flat. Solid color. Please don't screw this up. And hurry, you have to be back here by the time I'm done. If I'm late, it'll mess everything up, and you can't upset the bride on her wedding day. I'm sure I can handle it. He wandered through the chaotic, packed aisles of Walmart, gathering Stephanie's items with meticulous care. He didn't want to hear all night about how he picked up the wrong gift bag or size of tampon. His final stop was electronics, where he picked up a car charger and a DVD. He'd saved the action movie she would hate for the next time he needed to escape her drama. With a full basket, he searched for the shortest checkout line. The ten items or less line. Perfect. It was four people deep, but that still made it the shortest line by three people. Fifteen minutes later, he was on deck. The blonde woman in front of him moved to swipe her card, and the counter was free for him to pile up his items. A loud voice piped up behind him. Excuse me! She poked his shoulder with a wrinkled, bony finger. You have twelve items there. This is the ten items or less line. You need to get in another line. He took a breath and forced a smile. It's only two items. It's okay. No, it's not okay! The woman's gray curls shook as she jabbed her finger toward the sign. Twelve items is not ten items. It's not less than ten items. You're in the wrong line. He looked to the cashier for help. She shrugged and handed the blonde woman her receipt. I'm going to call the manager. The woman was nearly shouting. You can't have more than ten items in the ten items or less line. It's not fair to everyone else. Okay, okay. I'll put back two items. Will that make you happy? <laughs> she crossed her arms and pursed her lips at him. Fine. 
He considered each item. The card, gift bag, tissue paper, and panties were necessary. The flower girl had to have a ribbon in her hair. He was sure of that. He wouldn't face the night with a girlfriend who didn't have mitol and tampons. She'd freak if she didn't have the right mascara or stockings, and without a memory card for the camera, he would surely face execution. Well, his DVD could go. He shoved it into the candy display. Ten items were on the counter, and one remained in his basket. The car charger. He took out his phone and glanced at the battery. Six percent. He set the charger on the counter. That's still eleven items, the gray-haired woman said. I know, but I need them all. Manager! Okay! He shoved the charger into the skittles and glared at the woman. He swiped his card and mashed the receipt into his pocket. As he walked away, he heard the cashier say to her, You have thirteen items here. I know, but you can make an exception for a senior citizen, can't you? The cashier began to scan her items with no further comment. He swallowed his desire to turn and let her have it, to just be able to scream at someone. He swallowed, though, and kept swallowing as he fought his way out of the parking lot maze. At the stoplight, his phone buzzed, and he read Stephanie's text. Where are you? I'm almost done. On my way, he typed back. Four percent battery. He made it within six miles of the salon before the car engine started knocking. He pulled off the road and looked at his gauges. The gas. Stephanie hadn't let him take the five minutes required to fill up on their way to the salon. He'd forgotten to stop in his rush to get to Walmart and his frustration after leaving. He took out his phone and called her. Where are you? she answered. We have to get there. I'm close, but I ran out of gas because you wouldn't let me stop earlier. Oh, so now it's my fault you forgot to get gas? Yes. Your fault we left twenty minutes late. Your fault I didn't get gas last night because you had to be home in time to watch Jay Leno. But he didn't say any of these things. Instead, he calmly replied, my phone is about to die. I need you to call and have someone bring me gas. Call who? I don't have the number for... Beep, beep. The screen went black. No matter what he did now, they would be late. Very late. She would be furious. He'd never hear the end of it. Unless... A smile stretched onto his face. Freedom crept in, melting away the stress bit by bit. He laughed as the weight of her world lifted from him and floated away. Let it land on some other poor sucker. He stuck his dead phone in his pocket, locked the car, and walked away. Thank you for listening!